What if I told you that despite publishing over 1400 videos and generating millions in revenue, I only just figured out how to grow my business on YouTube. Here are the nine lessons I wish I'd known from the start and be sure to stick around for number nine because it's the exact opposite advice of what every content guru is telling you. But before I get into the lessons, let me answer the question, which is why do I even care about posting content on YouTube? Well, I'm not just doing it because literally every single seven, eight and nine figure business owner I know is doing it. I'm not just doing it because in the last 30 days, it increased our close rate from 33% to 57%. I'm not just doing it because we generate consistently five to 10 qualified calls a day on our calendar from the platform, from people literally asking to work with us. And I'm not just doing it because last month, almost 50% of the sales that we made in our business, the last thing they did was watch a YouTube video. The reason I'm doing it is because of the book, The One Thing. And if you've never heard of this book, it's essentially the idea that you, whatever goal you have for the future, you chunk it down into what you need to do every single day to reach that goal. So if you wanted to make a billion dollars, what do you need to do every day starting today to make a billion dollars? And the more I thought about that, the more I realized for me, the secret is going to be to capturing as much attention as possible. I'm a very firm believer that if I focused on nothing else other than my ability to capture attention and build an audience, anything I do in the future is going to be wildly, wildly successful. And there's plenty of examples of this, of huge celebrities like The Rock and Conor McGregor and Kylie Jenner, literally making hundreds of millions of dollars. Ryan Reynolds, more money than they ever made being celebrities just because they have a massive amount of attention and then they just funnel that attention at whatever new product or service they're selling. But what about like maybe less uh, a list celebrity people. Well, you have everyday people like Mr. Beast, KSI, Logan Paul. They just recently launched a Lunchable essentially alternative. What do they know about Lunchables? Probably not a whole lot, but it's a huge opportunity in the marketplace for them to build a business and then eventually exit it. Another great example is Dave Ramsey with his app, Every Dollar. If I asked Dave Ramsey how good he is at creating apps, I'd probably say, he would say, not very good. But he was able to take his attention that he has created from creating content over the past few years and and funnel it into his new app called every dollar which i've heard he has over three million active users on right now so this is, might be a billion dollar play for dave ramsey when all is said and done and all he did was generate content and then many of you know this guy right here alex ramosi and so what has he done the past few years well other than build successful businesses he's also been creating an insane amount of content and the amount of attention that he's garnished he has now pivoted into a play that will very likely make him a billionaire which is a software called School. So he partnered with Sam Ovens and he is now actually funneling all the attention from his uh, content into the software, making it a multi-billion dollar play. So these are all examples of not A-list celebrities, but pretty much everyday regular people from Ohio and random places that have over the past few years garnishing attention and then literally liquidating that attention for very likely a nine figure, if not a 10 figure play. So let's walk through the nine lessons. Lesson number one, which is to treat your YouTube channel like a series like Game of Thrones and not like a network like Netflix. What I mean by this is that YouTube really rewards you based on one key metric and that is watch time. How long are the people staying on your videos when they're watching them and how many videos are they watching in a row? If they watch multiple videos of yours in a row, then YouTube will reward you by promoting your videos to more people. If they watch one video and then they go to another video and they don't like it and they hop off and YouTube's actually going to punish you for that action. And so the, what I've learned from here is that if you're like Netflix, which is every single video you make is in a different background and a different setting and on a different topic and with a different cadence and a different intro and a different presentation style, you're going to really have a lot of people not follow through on all your videos because they're going to like one style of video and then they're going to go to the next video and it's going to be a totally different style. And even though it could be maybe the same topic or still within the realm of stuff that you like to talk about, because it's not similar enough uh, people are going to hop off. So the Game of Thrones has done a good job of this because even though they might have different storylines um, and different plot twists and things going on, it's all following one very similar common theme, right? And so for me, if I actually show you, if I come back over here, uh, what this looks like for us, I used to publish a variety of different videos on YouTube. So I would publish videos on uh, like case study videos down here on the bottom. And what I noticed was that over time, people actually really liked these style of videos here where 
where I'm screen sharing on my iPad and I'm walking through uh, different things that we're doing to grow our business. And so let me show you the difference in these two styles of video. So this one in seven days has 20,000 views. There's about four people viewing it every single hour and it's an 8.2 times outlier of all my other videos. So eight times better essentially than every other video I've done. This one right here, three people are viewing it every hour and it has a 16 times outlier compared to all my other videos. So do you notice how these things are very similar in the styles? And that means when I look in the analytics that these two videos actually recommend each other. Now compared to these videos over here, someone was watching YouTube is now on easy mode for business owners and they come down and they see this interview style where I'm interviewing a client for a case study, very likely they're going to hop off. And that's why this video has 1.4 thousand views published four months ago. And this video up here has literally 20 times that posted seven days ago. This one has 1.4 thousand views uh, posted four months ago. And this one has uh, uh, 40 times that published two months ago. So the main lesson here is that you need to make sure that you're creating a consistent style of content that your audience likes so they can binge watch one episode after another episode after another episode after another episode so you can increase the amount of people that are watching your videos. Now, a question you might ask me is, Ravi, but I thought that case studies and testimonials are really great to publish on your YouTube channel. And the truth is that it is important to generate sales, which is why we're creating content. We're not content creators, you and I. We're trying to make content to grow our business and acquire clients with no cost, right? But what I've learned is that case studies are really, really great and you can definitely publish them on a separate YouTube channel. But what's even more powerful is when you put testimonials or case studies inside of the same style you've been doing uh, recently. So a great example of this is that video I was talking about previously, YouTube is now on easy mode for business owners, the one that's really popped off, off for us recently. I put an example testimonial of one of our clients, Ryan Dice, inside of there uh, at, to kind of further clarify a point that I was making. So instead of having a whole separate video where I'm talking talking about how great my company is and the case studies and it's totally different. I've weaved the testimonials and case studies inside the videos that I know that people watch in order to make sure that not only am I getting views, but I'm also getting sales from the business. Lesson number two is going to be something I call the content prism. And this is a concept that I created for my clients because what I notice most people, whenever they're creating content online, they focus on creating content forwards to backwards, meaning they say, what's going to get the most views. Okay. Let's create that content. And and somehow let me turn that into the sales for my business. But instead, what you need to do is you need to do backwards to forwards, meaning you need to figure out what, uh, pe what words people are talking about on their sales calls, what your best clients are saying and what they look like. You create all of that information. You, uh, you dissect it. It's worth the time. I promise you, you put it into something we call the sales copy blueprint, which essentially identifies what are the main keywords that you should be talking about in your content. And then you use that through your content prism to then create your video sales that are your YouTube videos, your Instagram video, your ads, because that creates the cohesive uh, messaging from the top of funnel content you have all the way down to the clients that you're currently serving. And when you have that, you can make a video that doesn't get an insane amount of views, but still generates a lot of money for your business. So spend a lot of time at the beginning, before you start creating content, identifying what type of content, what word should I be saying? What topic should I be talking about? And then you figure out, okay, now let me create a, let's package this up for my video sales that are, or my YouTube videos. And uh, uh, just to kind of further clarify this point, if I made a video about, let's say right now, uh, the lessons that I've learned from publishing over 1400 videos for my business, let's say this is the YouTube video I just made. Well, then people are going to go in the description down below and they're going to watch my video sales letter where I talk more in depth about how we can help people create a content marketing system like we have to generate uh, five to 10 qualified sales calls a day for their business, which then leads them to the actual sales call itself. Let's say this is a happy salesperson right here where they're going to be able to walk them through this process even more in depth. So that kind of cohesion is going to be really, really powerful uh, for using YouTube as a real revenue engine for your business. And to further clarify this point, let me show you actually a mistake that I used to make. So this is me creating videos about cold emailing on my YouTube channel. And you can see here back at the time, this is a 4.9 times outlier, which is pretty good for my channel. The thing that I was, the re, the, I was doing this type of video because I thought that this was getting us a lot of views. And so this would be lead people to getting on calls and then we would close these clients. The problem that I realized is once I started identifying who our dream clients were, once I started meeting with my sales team every single week and getting an idea of who they like to get on the sales call with, I figured out that people who send cold emails, even though we can not help them, typically they're on the lower list of the clients that we want to work with. Mostly because if you're sending cold emails, you probably don't have enough money to invest in the growth of your business 
this, you're uh, like moving pretty slowly. And we don't even like to help clients with cold emails because man, that's a real complicated and convoluted process that has a huge sales cycle on it just to get one client. We like to focus more on either organic content or paid advertising, which is way more leveraged and way faster. But if we had content around, hey, here's the things about cold emailing, it would be really difficult to get somebody on the call and say, hey, you need to create content. And they say, oh no, I'm here because Ravi was talking about cold emailing. So instead, now we create videos that are just matched up perfectly with the offer that we have. For example, YouTube is now an easy mode for business owners where I talk about why every business owner needs to be on YouTube. And then that's a perfect parlay into them working with us. Okay. The next lesson that I have here is that content is a product inside of your business. So you should treat it as such. This was something that took me a while to learn, right? I used to just do content whenever I felt like it. I would kind of throw something up without a lot of thinking around it and I would just post it on Instagram or, or Twitter or LinkedIn or YouTube and I'd say, oh, here's a piece of content. And if it, it was good or bad, I didn't really care, right? I was just kind of going through the motions essentially. But what I've learned after publishing over 1400 videos and working with thousands of clients is that people treat your high ticket, most expensive packages with the same weight that they do your free videos on YouTube. Meaning that if somebody watches your videos and thinks they're very valuable, they learn a lot from you, you know what you're talking about, then they're gonna think that they're gonna learn a lot from you, get a lot of results, um, and be happy to work with you in your high ticket products or services. However, on the flip side, if they see your content and they think, oh, this is kind of half butts, if it's not that valuable, if it just is like fluff, if, if they don't really trust you inside of it, if you're kind of disorientated with all of you, you didn't put a lot of work into it, then they're gonna think the exact same thing about your products, okay? And actually we lost a deal the other day in radical transparency because uh, in our membership site, Scaling School, we had one link un underneath a video that was broken. And when a guy got on a sales call, he said, oh, because that link was broken, uh, I don't think I'm gonna work with you guys because if this is broken, then there's probably other things broken inside your business. Now, granted, I think that that was a little bit of an exaggeration, but that's a perfect example of why, how people treat stuff that's like that small, uh, that has to do with their experience in your business, like what it's gonna be like when they work with you on a larger scale, when they invest more money. And so we went back and we fixed that video. And what you should be doing is taking the lessons from me here and making sure that you're investing into your content as it is as equal uh, and as important to your prospects as your actual high ticket product is as well. The next lesson that I've learned is don't optimize for views, right? What a lot of people will do is they will create content because all these content and you know YouTube gurus out there are saying, oh, oh, this is what everybody told me when I first started. Uh, oh, oh, just create top of funnel content, get the most generic wide content that you can possibly create. And then when you make that wide content, you'll get the, the one or two people that are qualified and then they'll watch your additional content and then they'll be clients of yours. Well, this goes uh, against what I've learned for multiple different reasons. First of all, the obvious one is what I talked about a little bit earlier, which is if I create really wide uh, topic content, then what I'm doing is I'm kind of being more like Netflix than I am like a series, meaning I'm creating a, like a totally different topic of what I want to create uh, because I'm hoping to get one person to come in and watch one video and I'm hoping they're going to watch another video that's totally different, but that doesn't work. We want to keep a similar theme, similar topics throughout the entire channel because we know that's what people want. The second reason why this doesn't work is because if somebody comes in and they, um, and they see that you're posting videos on uh, like relationships and dating and fitness and all this stuff, well, then they're going to think, well, I'm not going to learn from this person because they don't really talk about this thing that I want to talk about. Let's say business. This is a great example is uh, Alex Ramosi, a gentleman I talked about earlier. He came out with a video talking about this exact thing. He was creating all this top of funnel awareness content, but the problem is all those people wanted was uh, like the personal training people wanted more personal training. The relationships people wanted more relationships. And so if you just put your business content top of funnel, then you'll get business people on the bottom. Now I'm using me as an example. These are my lessons, but for you, if you are fitness, put the fitness stuff inside of here. Don't talk about relationships. Don't talk about self-development. Don't talk about all these other things. Focus on fitness and go deep and deeper on that because the videos you attract top of funnel will just further solidify everybody through that, um, that sales copy blueprint through that content prism down to your video sales letter, down to the sales calls and into clients. So if you're creating content top of funnel, the very, very quote unquote wide content, 
that attracts your ideal prospects and talks about the problems that you solve, well, then you're going to get way more ideal prospects to watch the video even to begin with. And then you only have to publish one video to get a bunch of leads, calls, and sales versus the other strategy is, oh, you publish this top of funnel video that has nothing to do with your business. And then you got to publish these three other videos that has to do with your business. And you hope that somehow they watch this one video and then they go to the next video and then they become a lead call sale. But I can't tell you how many times, even for our clients, we just do the first video directly talking about the stuff that they serve, who they serve, and it immediately leads to leads, calls, and sales for their business. Now, moving on to the next lesson here, it is, has to do with the difference between topics and packaging. Now, I would say that this is probably the largest lesson, the most important lesson that I've learned in the last six to 12 months. What if I told you that these two videos right here were literally the exact same topics? I'm essentially talking about the same thing in these two videos, which is leverage, how you can apply leverage to grow your business and to essentially buy back your time. In this video right here, I talk about, hey, here are the five hires that take me 25 hours a week. This is time management for busy entrepreneurs. This one I say, why dumb lazy people make more money than you. This one I had 2.7 uh, thousand views in four months. This one I had 5.5 thousand views in three days. What's the difference in these two things? Well, the topic is the exact same. I'm talking about the same thing in both of them. Uh, they're actually very similar presentations. What was the difference is, excuse me, the packaging. This is the wrapper of the video. This is the actual thing that, this is how people digest it. This is why people even want to click it on in the first place. I made it more appealing. I said, why lazy or dumb, lazy people make more money than you. That's going to be way more enticing for somebody to click on it and watch it rather than five hires that save me 25 plus hours a week. So once again, people are thinking, Oh, uh, I, I don't want to, Ravi said, I, uh, I shouldn't focus on views. So I don't care if I only get a hundred views or 500 views. Well, don't focus on views only, but if you can talk about the same topic that you know is the thing that brings you leads, calls, and sales based on your content prism and sales copy blueprint. But you could get, for example, um, 5.5 thousand views instead of 2.7 uh, thousand views. So pretty much double the views. And this is in three days, by the way, why would you not do that? Okay. So I'm not saying never focus on views. I'm saying focus on views last, but still definitely focus on views. And so the way you're going to do that is in packaging. How do you package up the content so that more people can consume it that are your ideal qualified prospects? And this is actually what took me from five months ago. My average video is 2.2 thousand, 1.9, 2.5. And you can see these are 0.9 outliers, 0.8 outliers, one uh, X outliers too. Uh, in the past few months, uh, 1.8 X outliers, 2.7 outliers, 16 outliers, 2.2, 3.2, 3.3, 3.5, 5.8, 14,000 views, 9,000 views, 8,000 views, 8,000 views, uh, 5,000 views, 39,000 views, 6.6 thousand views. You get the idea, right? So literally I'm talking about almost the exact same stuff that I was talking about up here, but I learned how to package content better. And that's exactly what we help our clients with as well. So for example, here's one of our clients, I'll call him O, uh, just to respect his privacy here, but he said, thanks for that heads up on this strategy I'm talking about here. This is the first video I made using the concepts I found there had one book call from it already. And you can see this is an 8.7 X outlier. And one day he had 4.2 thousand views. And this is on a channel that's essentially brand new. He had a few videos on it two plus years ago, but they were not even talking about what he's talking about here. And so literally with one of the first videos that he published, uh, he had almost a nine times outlier and he's getting the qualified book calls from it, right? So that's because he now understands after working with us, how to package up your videos correctly. Directly. Let's move on to the next lesson, which is podcasts are absolutely useless. Now this is going to piss off a lot of people in here that have podcasts that like podcasts. They're dying on the podcast too. Anybody that's already invested over a hundred, 200, 300, 400 episodes on podcasts, they're going to sit there and tell you podcasts are the best things in the world. But I can't tell you how many clients I work with that have podcasts that teach people about podcasts. And they all tell me the exact same thing. Podcasts are dying. The number of podcasts, uh, uh, of new podcasts is on the rise, but the total amount of like, uh, active listeners per podcast is actually decreasing. Meaning that there's more podcasts that are in podcast graveyard and people that are investing five, 10, 15, 20, 30 episode, realizing it's not for them. What most people won't tell you, which I'm happy to tell you here, because I've done, I think close to 50 or 60 podcasts, uh, for my show, the Roy Wallace show is that it's not worth it. It's not good. If, if your main goal 
is to grow your business. The problem with podcasts are as follows. First of all, they're very time intensive, meaning that you have to actually spend, you know, one to two hours with this person. And then they hang out afterwards, hang out your place. You talk to them, blah, blah, blah. The second is the operational complexity, right? So if you're trying to get somebody um, to get uh, on your calendar, you got to message them. You got to ask them. They got to coordinate. They get lost. They miss it. Then, then they're late. Now you're pushing up your next meetings back. Um, and the third thing is it's not about you. Okay. Which you're like, okay, Ravi, don't be so selfish. Not everything has to be about you. Well, that's fair. But if I'm trying to make uh, sales for my business, it's not very good if I'm sitting there talking to somebody and I'm hyping up their business and talking about how great they are instead of focusing on uh, how great my business is. Right. And sure. If you run a podcast, I know people that charge $10,000 or $20,000 to appear on their podcast. But in reality, if I can say this without sounding too cocky, that is absolute pocket change. Okay. That is legitimately to make, to work this, or you're only going to get 10 grand when you get like literally hundreds of thousands or millions of subscribers. And then when you have 10 grand per podcast episode, uh, that you put out there, like that's pretty good. Or you can make videos that are about your business and you could get five, 10, 15 high ticket clients paying you 10 to 15 grand uh, per video, right? And that stuff just compounds over and over and over on it. So I'm not a huge fan. I can tell you uh, because I did it, I'm no longer doing it. I don't fall for sunk cost fallacy, meaning just because I spent a lot of time, energy, money, I invested like 20 grand of this entire uh, podcast studio. I just gave it all up. I said, okay, this doesn't make sense. This isn't, this isn't leading to what I want here, which is more leads, calls, and sales for my business. Uh, the next lesson that I learned here is that most people sleep on search results. So there's a few different types of videos you can make on YouTube. The main, the most famous ones are browser videos, uh, which is like that you show up in uh, whenever someone's on their YouTube feed at the very beginning. The next one suggested, this is very, very powerful. This is when one of the previous videos is suggesting your video next. Uh, you, a lot of you guys watching this video right now, I want you to comment down below if you see some of my videos on the right-hand side of this column right now. I can guarantee you see at least one, if not two or three. And that's the benefit of having videos that are in a series, not a podcast podcast and a case study in this random video over here. But the third thing that I think most people sleep on is search because it's not sexy. It's not exciting, right? But I have videos, actually some of my top videos today are videos I made three, four years ago that rank number one when someone types in how to use ClickUp, how to use Asana, free Facebook ads course. You can see this is in an incognito window, meaning that this is not weighted at all. I typed in free Facebook ads course. Look what the first video that pops up there is, right? So if somebody's coming in there looking for help with Facebook ads, then we can help them not only with their Facebook ads, but also making it way more profitable by implementing contents to get a higher return on their Facebook ads. So I focus very heavily on search. I typically do like one out of every four videos will be a search result video that doesn't get a lot of views from the very beginning, but over time in one, two, three, four years, it's way outlasting any of these browser or suggested videos. And then the next lesson, is that if you're serious about content creation and you're like, okay, uh, Ravi, it, this all makes sense. I need to start publishing videos. Then you need to treat it the same as you would any other investment you had in your business, meaning you need to put it on your calendar. You're probably very much like me, where if it's not on your calendar, you simply don't do it. So you can see right here, I have, uh, this is Tuesday, every single Tuesday, whenever I start work, which is around 7 a.m., I do my first batch of content, which is gonna be YouTube videos. I do this at my house. I don't need an editing team. I don't need anybody else. I film that on my own. I do a little lunch and sun bath outside, get my vitamin D, let it just hit my body, get re-energetic, and just kind of take a break from the content I just created. And then I go back and I create more content. This typically my second half of the day is around short form content, which we also help clients with on Instagram as well. So first uh, part of the day, I'm doing YouTube. Second part of the day, I'm doing Instagram. And between these two things, we're able to generate hundreds of thousands of dollars in profit for our business every single month without any kinds of, um, any kind of cost per acquisition. And my final lesson for you here is that the thing that most people, all these YouTube and content gurus tell you is never make a call to action. You always just point to another YouTube video. It's going to trash your watch time, your view time, blah, blah, blah. All these things that everybody's saying. But the truth is, is that they're optimizing for views. And remember, we're optimizing for sales. So what I've learned is that you can make calls to action without really any kind of penalization or penalty on your YouTube video. So for example, right now, I'm going to tell you that if you like everything I've said so far, and you want my help in building a content marketing system in your business, so you can start generating five to 10 qualified sales calls a day so that you can raise your prices, close more dream clients, increase profits and become an industry leader then go down below and watch a video where I walk through a more in-depth training of exactly how we can set up this content marketing system in your business. So I'm going to make this CT 
GTA here. I'm going to make an assumption that this video is going to do it pretty well. And also, when I look back over at these videos that I was talking about earlier down here that are doing very well, literally go back and watch those videos and you'll see, I'd say 99% of them have a call to action, at least at the end, if not also in the media, middle of the video as well. So we're making direct calls to action to ask people to come work with us uh, that like this style of content and want to make money from content as well. And we're not seeing that impact our growth on our YouTube channel.